Let's prove the most famous number in mathematics, Euler's constant E, is an irrational number. E is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial, etc., an infinite series. It cannot be expressed as the ratio of two integers. How cool is that? And how can we actually prove this? What is the intuition behind it? So there are two steps behind this proof, and it's so beautiful. Step one is just to understand how we can actually find a close approximation to E by adding up finitely many terms in this sequence. Okay, so what we can do is, an infinite series is of course hard to understand. So to understand E, we just add up a finite number of this infinite series. So let's look at Sn, which is what's called the nth partial sum of the series. It's sum k equals one to n of one over k factorial, which you can also write, you know, just to see it out, it's going to be one plus one over two factorial plus dot 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 plus one over n factorial. Okay, the first n terms in the series. Now, if you think about the difference between E and Sn, how well does Sn approximate E? you'll see that it is very, very well, very, very rapidly. Okay, and this is actually a crucial aspect of the irrationality of E. So what I mean by that is if we look at the difference E minus Sn, we're just gonna be adding up the tail end of the series. So we're gonna be adding up some k equals to n plus one to infinity of one over k factorial. Okay, so the last tail end of the series, which you can write out as one over n plus one factorial, um, plus one over n plus two factorial, etc., so on and so forth. And you can see that this is really, really small, right? You can see it's really, really small. And we're gonna actually be very precise about that. How small is it? Okay, so it's an infinite series. It could end up being a big number, even though all the terms seem small. But let's actually just approximate this further. We factor out an n plus one factorial, and we're just going to get one plus, so we're gonna get one plus one over n plus two, right? If you just factor out an n plus one factorial from the n plus two factorial denominator, you just get an n plus two. And then you add up the next term, you're gonna have an n plus three factorial. So if you factor out n plus one factorial, you're gonna get n plus two times n plus three, and so on and so forth, right? So you're gonna get this series. And how do we actually approximate this? Okay, so we're gonna do some nice, nice little neat tricks here is we're now going to say that this term, you see n plus two is gonna be greater than n plus one, right? n plus two times n plus three is greater than n plus one squared. So if we take the reciprocals, one over n plus two is less than one over n plus one. One over n plus two times n plus three is less than one over n plus one squared. So what we are gonna get is that equality is gonna be less than one over n plus one factorial, right? Times the following, times one plus one over n plus one, plus one over n plus one squared. And as you can see, you get two, three terms, four terms, five terms in the denominator as you keep going. So it's gonna be a geometric series, one over n plus one, one over n plus one squared, one over n plus one cubed, etc. And what's really beautiful about this is now we can actually approximate this, I'll do that up there. And if you're enjoying so far, please don't forget to smash that like button and hype the video if you'd like to. That makes a huge difference to use that hype feature. I love helping people and reaching as many people as possible. So let's keep on going with this, it's gonna be so beautiful. So I've got that. Now we know that this is a geometric series which we can add up, okay? That's how estimates work. We couldn't actually figure out this exact value. Of course we can't, you know? It, it'd be impossible, basically. But what we can do is we can approximate, and the geometric series, you know, of a geometric series with the ratio r, the sum one plus r plus r squared, etc., is one over one minus r. Of course, you know, if the geometric series converges, the ratio has absolute value less than one. But what we can do is we can write this as one over n plus one factorial. And using the formula for the geometric series I just gave you, the ratio is one over n plus one. We're gonna get one, my, one over one minus one over n plus one. And of course, making a common denominator there, I'm just gonna do it in two steps. You're gonna get n plus one over n plus one. So you're gonna get n over n plus one in the denominator, which when you take the reciprocal is n plus one over n. Okay, so it's gonna be one over n plus one factorial times n plus one over n. And of course, n plus one, n plus one cancels in the n plus one factorial. So we just get one over n factorial times n. Okay, that's going to be a bound on E minus Sn. Okay, so we can actually write, it, write that out. So I'm just going to erase this. So this is important in its own right. You know, we're getting a sense of how to approximate E. Okay, that's going to be important. If you think about the intuition of the proof, you need to have a sense of that if you're gonna prove anything about E, right? So we get this and we know that this is going to be less than one over n factorial times n. So as you can see, n factorial grows really large. Okay, so if n is already, you know, 10 or something, 10 factorial times 10 is already going to be a huge number. Okay, it's going to be greater than, for example, two power 10 times 10. So this is going to be a very tight approximation. You don't need so many terms in the series to approximate E to a large number of decimal places. 
Okay, you don't need so many. If n is 100, you're already going to approximate it to at least 90, significantly more than that decimal places. Okay, so you can approximate e very quickly. And now we're going to use that to show e cannot possibly be a fraction. Okay, that's going to be so beautiful. And I'm going to do that right now. I just want to give a huge thank you so much to Alex, Nathan, and Stefan for ongoing support on Patreon, and Aman, Shabid, and Rob for ongoing support as YouTube channel members. Makes a huge difference to the channel. I'm creating a library of elite, infinite, free math content. I'm a professional mathematician, all levels of math, from basic math, pre calculus algebra trigonometry to graduate level math I'm going to do everything on my channel over time and it really helps a lot all the support because I'm doing everything on my own right now but I want to scale up production and create all kinds of different sorts of levels of content of math to really reach and outreach and help so many people all over the world and so small amounts of support really help me outsource work so I free up time so I can produce even more math content so huge thank you so much for their support and if you want to support you know please consider clicking on the join button not to through an iOS app if you can, but through a web browser that, that helps in terms of the support or through Patreon, links in the description. That means a lot to me. So let's keep on going with the video. So let's now do a proof by contradiction. We're going to assume that this is going to be equal to P over Q, where P and Q are positive integers, okay? So P and Q are positive integers, PQ is at least one. And so we're going to assume for a contradiction, this is a, such a fraction and P and Q are let's say natural numbers, okay? So I'm just going to put that out there. That's, that's our assumption. We of course know that E is a positive number, okay? It's just a sum of positive numbers, it must be positive. So we know that. So we're now gonna get a contradiction from this. We're going to use the good approximation of E by these partial sums. And we're gonna do this sneaky little trick is we're going to look at E minus the Qth partial sum. So we've assumed presupposed it's such a ratio. We're going to look at the Qs partial sum SQ and we're going to look at that difference. We know that's going to be less than one over Q factorial times Q. Okay, pretty cool. You're gonna see something really cool now. It's just gonna be one more step away. Okay, it's very beautiful. So we know that that's true. We've got this approximation. Now we're going to multiply both sides by Q factorial. Okay, so of course E minus SQ is positive because E minus SQ is a sum of positive numbers. You know, the partial, the sum, the series is an infinite series of positive numbers. So if you truncate it, you know, the remaining terms have to all be positive. So E minus SN is positive. So this is just going to be this uh, inequality. And now we multiply by Q factorial. We're gonna get zero is less than Q factorial times E minus SQ um, is going to be less than one over Q. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere because we've presupposed E is P over Q. So I'm just gonna do that over there. All right, so we presuppose, we know that E is equal to P over Q. That's our assumption they're gonna contradict. So now we're gonna get zero is less than Q factorial E minus Q factorial SQ is less than one over Q. And one over Q of course is going to be less than or equal to one because Q is greater than or equal to one. Okay, so this is going to be less than or equal to one. And now look at Q factorial E, okay? E is equal to P over Q, that's our assumption. So Q factorial E is going to equal to Q factorial times P over Q, which is going to equal to P times Q minus one factorial. That's an integer, okay? That's an integer. That's going to be a natural number. I'm gonna write this as N, that's a natural number. We also know Q factorial SQ, what is SQ equal to, okay? So just to sort of write it out here, SQ was the Qth partial sum, it is the sum of the first Q terms. So SQ was going to equal to sum K varies from one to Q of one over K factorial. So if you multiply Q factorial times SQ, you're going to clear all the denominators, right? Because Q factorial times each term, Q factorial by K factorial and K is less than or equal to Q is always a natural number. So Q factorial SQ is also going to be a natural number. Okay, so we can write that this is also going to be a natural number. The difference of two natural numbers, the difference of two natural numbers is greater than zero, but less than one. That is impossible. No integer can be between zero and one. So therefore we've got a contradiction and therefore E is irrational. Such a beautiful proof. And I've got two fun videos for you. Okay, love that video, love that beautiful proof of E. You're gonna love some understanding of pi. It proves straight from the definition. It's just two minutes long, two minutes long that pi is greater than three, just like the ancient Greeks did it. A very beautiful proof. Check it out, it's gonna pop on the screen here. And another fun video, you know, I've used a specific definition of E as an infinite series, but where does E really come from? Many people don't actually know, including mathematicians, people who've studied E a lot, they don't know its secret origin. It's actually something even fifth graders can understand. Check it out, you're gonna love it. Have an amazing day. I'm super excited to catch you in the next video.